Hey, what's up guys, it's Lee, and today I'm gonna to talk about why your photos are not sharp. Now, you've probably been out on some shoots before where you're you're in the mode, you're in the zone, and you're taking all these uh, wonderful shots, and you're like, yeah, I'm really killing it right now. And then you go home, and you put your SD card in your computer, and you blow it up on a big screen, and then you realize that your photos are not super sharp. And so, I wanna cover some reasons why you're probably not getting the sharpest images, and hopefully these tips can help to sharpen Open up some of your images and take your photos to the next level. Now, just want to tell you guys that these are in no particular order, but these are all things that I think you should consider when it comes down to getting nice, sharp images. So the very first is that you are probably not shooting in continuous autofocus mode. You might be shooting in single shot mode. And so if you do find yourself shooting in single shot mode, and especially if you're shooting portraits and you're capturing people, um, you definitely want to be in continuous autofocus mode. And depending on the camera it's going to be called continuous autofocus or ai servo or something similar to that depending on what ecosystem you're in but you definitely want to be in continuous autofocus mode because your camera is going to be constantly keeping that image in focus the entire time that you're shooting if you don't have it on you only have it on single shot mode what happens is is that your camera only focuses on that one moment that you actually press down the shutter button and that can mean that you might miss focus a little bit if your subject has moved now the second reason is a little bit you know it's a little bit like to me it's a no-brainer but it might not be a no-brainer for you and that's the fact that your gear might need to be cleaned and you know if you're like me and you are excited to rush out the door and go capture some shots you might forget but you definitely want to make sure that your gear is always clean and you want to make sure that you clean your gear before each and every photo shoot no matter how quick or painless it might seem you definitely want to do that the reason is is that every single time that you change a lens on your camera you're introducing dust and dirt that can possibly get into your camera and get on top of your sensor which could could of course affect the image quality of your images and then also one of the other things is that your lenses might be a little bit dirty as well you could be touching your lenses on accident with your fingers there could just be something that it might encounter where it starts to get a little bit of a film on there there could be dust there could be so many different things that can happen with your lenses and so you want to make sure you always clean them and prepare them before every shoot if you do this you can be rest sure that your images are going to be a lot sharper the next reason is that your shutter speed is too slow for whatever it is that you're capturing now one of the things to keep in mind is that if you're like me you're most likely hand holding your camera and so your shutter speed should at least be one over the focal length that you're shooting at so for instance if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens then your focal length should at least be one over 50 and if you're shooting with a zoom so for instance like a 24 to 70 well you have to be very mindful of that because if you extend out to the 70 millimeter lens then yeah that means your focal length needs to be at least one over 140 so now of course depending on the lighting situation you know you have to be even more mindful of this but this is something that you should always have in the back of your mind now the next reason that your images might not be as sharp as you expect them to be is really just down to the aperture that you're using now we all love to shoot wide open and it's wonderful it's beautiful it's the reason why we spend so much money on these lenses but i want you to be mindful of the aperture that you're actually shooting at versus what you're actually shooting and how you're actually shooting this image and what you want the outcome to be. So for instance, if you're shooting with the 50 f 1.2, that's gonna have an extremely shallow depth of field. And so if you're getting very close up on your subject, then that means that if you focus in on the eye, there's a possibility that the nose and the cheek is gonna start to blur and that may or may not be something that you want. That might actually create a situation where your overall image is just not as sharp as you want so in some situations you may want to bump up your aperture to maybe f 2.8 f 3.5 and of course if you have more people in your image you need to be mindful of that as well and also increase that as well so just be very mindful of the aperture you're using and the look that you're trying to capture because that can have a big impact on how sharp your images are now the next reason is very much related to something we just talked about but this is motion blur now motion blur can occur in a couple of different ways it can occur from you because you're actually holding the camera and it also can occur because of the subject that you're shooting so if the subject that you're shooting is moving a lot then that can also create some motion blur so for instance if 
you're holding your camera and moving it around a lot, well, that's gonna introduce motion blur. So one of the ways to avoid that and to get nice crispy shots each and every time is to just bump up that shutter speed as much as possible. As much as that situation allows for, increase the shutter speed. That is going to make sure that you're capturing all the movement in the actual shot and you're eliminating that motion blur that might be introduced in your photos. Now the next reason is not always an issue, but sometimes it can be an issue. And so it's something you wanna be mindful of and that's that your ISO might be too high. So depending on the situation, you wanna keep a very close eye on your ISO and make sure you keep it within the range that is appropriate for your camera. Like every camera is different. So you're gonna know over time how far you can actually push your ISO before it starts to affect the image quality that you're getting out of it. But make sure you be, you're mindful of that and keep your ISO at a very reasonable level so that you can have that sharpness and that crispiness that you're looking for out of your images. Now, of course, these are just some ways that you can actually ensure that you're getting crispy shots, but there are others as well. So if you have any other ideas or any other ways that you make sure that you get nice crispy shots, leave those in the comments below. I'd love to see them and I'm sure everyone else would as well. So go ahead and leave those in the comments below. If you found this video to be helpful at all, even just a little bit, make sure you hit the like button as well. And if you have not subscribed to this channel already, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I try to shoot videos every single week. Also hit the notification bell so you're alerted every time I put out a video. Thanks for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one.